Hello guys and welcome to another immersive engineering video. Today we're going to talk about power, power generation in various forms. I think I will cover all of them. Um, yep, we'll see. And since we last time talked about power distribution and power transformation and storage, I think this will be a perfect topic now when we know how to handle it. This is quite a big subject, so let's get started directly. First, kinetic dynamo or kinetic, however you pronounce it. Quite simple to craft. Uh, copper wire coils, we've seen them before, an iron and some redstone, and this is how it looks. So you can say this is the back and this is the front. This is a block that transforms movement into energy movement such as wind or water movement so we can actually start with the wind variant first our treated sticks and the planks that we have made before turn them into blades and then a few blades into a windmill looks like this quite large you will if you want to place it like this then you need 12 blocks in between so six down here and then 12 on top and we place the dynamo in the middle place the windmill and then you just simply extract your power from the back perhaps from the sides as well i don't know but uh, let's see yeah three rf per tick not much but this will actually when you have a few it will actually build up to to some power and it's free and it's permanent so it it can still be useful and one important thing is that the higher you build them the faster they will rotate so we had three rf per tick down there all the way up here let's see if we can turn this on yep 11 rf per tick so quite a big boost from and i think you can get even more if you go even further up so that's good i guess the only pa tricky part is the is to connect power and distribute your power networks and so on but you will soon know how to do, deal with that uh, we can also upgrade it and since it, this is quite easy to do i guess Often you will do this directly. You need some industrial hemp fibers. And before we move on, let's talk about these fibers. And we can switch to normal mode. When you break tall grass, then you will get seeds. Normal, normal seeds, I mean. And these hemp seeds. These can be planted, as I've done over here the normal uh, what is it nine by nine field and when it has grown you can go crazy on this and you will get quite some seeds for further plants and uh, you will get the fibers that you will need actually the the uh, the seeds they will be used later on so I guess you will need a quite a big stock of these. So now when we have them, then we can craft our tough fabric and you can turn the windmill blades into improved windmill blades. And a few of those around some steel, improved windmill. And if you remember, we had, let's turn this back. We had three RF over here now if we turn this on then we will have seven rf so it's uh, roughly double perhaps exactly double i don't know if it's a rounding thing and if we go all the way up here where we had 11 rf you can get quite a lot out of this 24 rf per tick so nice improvement from oh man from this seven so 
but we can't always store it up here. That will be uh, that's not very useful. So we could uh, perhaps use some medium voltage to uh, wires to just draw it all the way down like this. Uh, remember that low voltage is have a higher loss than the medium voltage and that the the high voltage is has even lower loss but the medium one is easier to it's actually easier to use do it like this if you have a high voltage then you need to go via relays and have in a very creative way i guess so uh, medium voltage perhaps can be a good good solution 26.5 rf per tick because we're quite a big loss from all the way up there to down here but we still have some uh, a stable power income you could say when we go down here let's see can we turn this on again yeah 28 from these and here we had 26 but so you can see the losses we have from all the way up there to down here they um, are quite noticeable but um, yep the steel ones are annoying to uh, to build and uh, to draw lines so whatever do as you want to and we will come back to that tower over there in a while but now it's time for another type of power generation method we have the water wheel more treated wood planks and sticks water wheel segments and then we get the water wheel also a free and permanent like forever lasting forever generating power source simply have one block of water up here make it so it runs with the wheel and uh, so as much as possible from the wheel is in the water and then you will get out well i got nothing now we get 24 i think you can squeeze it up slightly higher but um, anyway still you're using the uh, dynamo in the same way as before it's just that we have a water wheel and these wheels, they can be stacked or put together three at tops. And uh, after that, you will need another dynamo. And here we get, here we get 74. So also quite stable, perhaps even better power generation method because you don't need to build that have tower and you have all the power down here already from the beginning so uh, okay nothing more special with that i think we can move on we can leave the the dynamo for now uh, because those are the two variants you can use it for and we can move on with a thermoelectric generator built from steel constantan and copper wire coils and look like this and this is quite interesting it's a quite good power generation block and it runs on the on the temperature difference between two sources here i'm using the most simple ones we have lava and water this will generate let's see this generates 29 rf per tick but you should can actually use ice. The problem with normal ice is that, well, you will get a higher, slightly higher outcome, but it will melt. So if you don't want it to melt, then you have to use packed ice. So this will give you the 31, but it, and they won't melt. And let's see. That's for when we use two, and if we use only one, this will drop down to 15. So uh, perhaps even better if you have the resources, then this is a very, very stable and free power generation method. And now we'll take a look at a very interesting 
power generation method, the lightning rod. Uh, it is built out of nine of these nine of these base blocks, and when they have when you have built them, just right click the center with a hammer and then you will have it formed. But to really make it work, and by work I mean by to make it catch the lightning, then you will need to build a quite high steel fence pole up like this. And there is quite a lot of theory crafting behind this and you can... Uh, basically the higher it is, the better it is, the works and uh, it works better during a thunderstorm than than in a normal rain daytime then nothing will happen you won't catch any power out of this <laughs> this area and this net is used to improve the chance of the lightning will uh, will strike this structure so i think it's 256 fence uh, blocks that you can have up here on the the highest highest level and I think you can build it all the way up to max building level. I think it will work even better. And then during a, a thunderstorm or during rain, sometimes lightning will strike this and you will get a huge amount of power. Uh, let's see, this 1.6 million, no, it's 16 million. So it's enough power from one thunder, from one lightning to fill four high voltage capacitors but you can only extract power from the sides like this here you can see our input and i'm trying to do it from the top it doesn't work we have to we have to do this correctly like this 4000 rf per tick there here, same thing here we had can't use the bottom and now we should have 4,000 over here and same thing here because this one was correct and corner blocks doesn't work either so like that and now it will quickly empty and well you will have tons of power until the next rain comes but as I said, there you can actually be quite creative and build quite advanced structures, but I will do this in another video, how to optimize that. All right, I think it's time to go and uh, take a look at our final power generation method for in this video. And now we'll take a look at biodiesel, biodiesel and uh, refinery, fermenter and then this baby the diesel generator but we'll take it in order so everything is clear this block you have seen before the industrial squeezer you can throw seeds in here most uh, mostly you will use you will like to use hemp seeds because they you will get more plant oils from those but normal one will works as well and once you have your plant oil you will probably extract it through a pipe over to the refinery so you can fill one part of it and um, we'll take a look at the refinery in just a little while first a new block the fermenter iron iron components pistons fermenter you will need eight fermenter blocks for one of these multi-block structures and Actually, you can, uh, okay, quite simple to build. Light engineering blocks, one in the center as well around the fermenter blocks, and then the engineering blocks again. And this will form you the fermenter. Exactly the same build up as the squeezer. All right, and uh, I think we can take a look at these blocks before moving on. Hammer and iron will give you metal blocks or sheets of metal, I guess. Use these with iron to craft fluid pipes. It's the ones I'm using over here. And you can also use the metal blocks, uh, the sheet metal blocks to craft yourself or build yourself a tank and a silo. 
for item storage, but this is for fluid storage. It's quite simple to build. Um, treated woods, sheet metal blocks like this, and then more of the blocks up here. Very simple. Let's see where, yeah, there's how you do it. So this one will be a good buffer step between No, no user interface. Well, between your squeezer and refinery or fermenter and the refinery and probably after the refinery as well. So now when we have fluid, we have piping, we can actually take a look at the, the refinery. More in, like slightly more expensive to build. You need heavy engineering blocks with the light ones in this pattern, heavy on the side, and then heavy light on this level and then you have your sheet metal blocks like this and then you form this structure like this and this has an interface that let's take a look at it here is our plant oil that we got from the squeezer and our fermenter well show uh, just throw your potatoes uh, apples sugar canes in here and it will be fermented into ethanol. Oh, both of these need power. That's why I have this power tower over here. So, and they are not consuming any power when they are still. So you can just have it hooked up. And then you will just have to insert your fluids from one, uh, one side each. And this is the output slot. Power and plant oil and ethanol will give you biodiesel. And uh, this block, you might recognize this from other blocks. Uh, when you apply a redstone signal to this, this uh, input, then the process will stop. The machine will freeze. So now when we have lots of diesel coming out this way, just pipe it into, I know it's not connected, pipe it into your generator. And uh, yeah, this is uh, also quite expensive to build. You will need two new blocks. We have them over here. Generator block, steel, electrum, and a kinetic dynamo. So you will need a few of these, six of them. And then we have the radiator block. You need nine of these. Copper, steel, and a water bucket. And the bucket won't be consumed. See? We'll get it back but you need more water so build it like this generator blocks heavy engineering blocks and radiator blocks in a quite simple structure but still quite costly right click the yep the center of that block you can also shift right click to yeah like this to shift direction okay so three power outputs these ones this block this machine will output 4000 rf per tick but and you can use only one i'm using three here but as i will show in a second it won't make any difference but you can at least you can hook this up with three different machines and all can be powered with 4000 rf per tick if uh, as long as you run them one by one uh, let's see let's prepare this yep oh i had some in it but uh, let's just do like that and it will be diesel will be output and into this side or this side and here you have the same redstone control as you've seen before and now if we take a look over here 4000 RF per tick and it doesn't matter if I connect more sides because the the diesel generator will still only output in total 4000 RF per tick so they will be shared you can do like this it doesn't matter okay now we have plenty of power for it to use you can probably Perhaps you want to put, hook this up to the excavator, like this one.
but I won't cover it in this uh, video. Let it be a teaser for what is to come in the next episode. I hope everything has been understandable. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And I hope you like this tutorial series. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.